Hi there, I'm Birgit O'Connor and welcome to the World of Watercolor Painting podcast. Now our goal is to keep you motivated, inspired, and just have fun. Today I'll be discussing shape and shadow with some of my students from our rock, sand, and sea glass course. Then after we do a few reviews, I'll be doing a demonstration. So I hope you join me and let's get started. And hi, we've got Katie from uh, the UK, and Linda from Santa Maria, and Claire from Colorado, and Annie from North Carolina, and Jan from the Gold Gold Country. Love it. Okay, great. It's so fun to see where everybody's coming from. And Terry from Maryland, and Karen from Idaho. Wonderful. What did you think about what you're doing so far? Isn't it fun? I, I love this course. This is one of my favorites. I want to hear from you. I want to get your feedback. I want you to write in the chat as we go along before I make my comments because I want to see what you think. And I, and what's going to happen, I, I know this will happen, is once you see other people's work, you will see what you want to do in your own. And a lot of times... Um, it, I really try to develop the meetings for whatever the needs are at that time. And it was very clear to me that I really want you to see everybody's painting. And then uh, if we have a chance, what I'd like to do is I have a couple demonstrations that I thought would be so fun to do. And um, let's see if we can get to that. I'll just say this right off the bat because it's really obvious to me just by looking at those two for just a second by seeing the highlights, you can see how it change and the uh, the way the shadows are, how it changes how you're looking at it. Like here, it looks like we're looking from the side. Here, we're looking right on top, and so interesting. And if you're thinking why why doesn't this work? Why doesn't the shadow? Or how do I make it lay down? Or you know how do I? You'll find out as you look at these. And so just go ahead and continue to make some comments in there. And then I'm going to uh, make comments myself, but I just like to go over all of these first so you can take a peek at them. And, you know, even for me that has been doing it for a long time, I always learn something. So they're all really wonderful. I, I mean, I'm so excited to see what you're doing. And let's see. And if you didn't get your painting in, that's okay. Uh, you'll you'll learn a lot from what we've got here. Okay, so what I thought was fascinating about this one is how they balance the shadow right through here. All the shadows look great. And it's interesting to have, um, you know, having that dark shadow is because of obviously there's no light that can get through the stone and you, it was very effective what you did, your placement of the shadows here. And it's interesting, you're also looking, uh, using the Saunders paper. So I haven't tried that yet. And I think your texture was very effective in here. So, and like I said, keep on putting things in the chat and I'll try to catch up with that later. And then here, good job on keeping your highlights. So for everybody looking at all of these, these highlights really give the object shape. And so let's look at this shadow here. It's almost a little bit of the same value, even though that looks darker, but we need to kind of um, create a little contrast. So if we go back here, you can see how this is lighter and also the placement see the light next to dark but it's still darker down here it creates contrast and we get that real uh, three-dimensional effect there and this happens here too just I might consider going a tad darker right there or maybe lifting well you did it here a little bit of a lighter value here and it's just a different way of looking at the rock so you did a, a wonderful job here they're all really wonderful so if you notice, like with this one here, and I really like this lost edge up here. And what I mean by lost edge is that obviously we can see the edges here, but right there we don't see them. Same thing over here. And it's very interesting. It could give the impression of perhaps maybe even more of a wet rock. So it was very, very effective. And how interesting that they put all the little uh, labels here like the sepia, brown matter, fantastic, wonderful way of keeping track of what you've done here. And with the shadows, 
uh, you can see with the blue, uh, it's a little distracting. So if you were going to put the French ultramarine blue in there, what I would do is use primarily some of this color and add a little more blue into it. But that blue can be a little distracting. So let's see if we look at, let's look at a comparison. You can see without it being so intensely blue, we look more at the highlight and the shape of it. But I would tone that color down a little bit. I think my comment to this artist was what kind of brush you were using, and I believe it was a, a silver or some other brush. I can't remember right now. And why I said that is if you're using a brush such as a, a Kalinsky or a, a silver brush is very soft, holds a lot of water, or uh, maybe it was a, a real good Robert Simmons brush, anything that holds a lot of water might be difficult for you to get that color intensity. So you might be wondering, why can't you build your color up? That could be because you're constantly reapplying more water into it. What I would do is consider coming back in with another pass to bring the color up a little more. And remember, these are not final paintings. This is just an exercise, but how to get past it and just try to take a tool because I'm, and then also when you have a rock that's right next to it, what I would do is go on the back side of the rock like this. Okay, I'm just gonna try to get back underneath there. And blue is kind of the color I have here. Let's see if I, maybe I can switch that. And I think you can see by just, I'm gonna accentuate a little bit, just have a little more fun with it. I'm going to have to get a bigger thing here. By going a little darker here, you can see that now you see your highlight even more. And remember, you would lift this out. I think this would actually kind of be fun to put. I think these would work well, like having um, being in water, actually. That would be a great impression. All right, so it looks like you're using a... Um, Maybe a watercolor canvas, or you're using an acrylic. That's that's, that's fine. fine. You're, you're getting, getting the no. okay. okay. Tell no. me. Oh, oh yes. yes. Probably twenty-year-old paper on the back side, and it might be a student grade. So it's just that's what, that's why it looks like that. I've never seen a pattern like that on paper. That's that interesting. Old. One of the questions that I think Lynn asked just now on the chat was one that I also have, so I'll ask it while I'm here. How do you decide the shape of the shadow and what it should be? Right, especially if you're just making it up, right? Yeah. Okay. Well, see now, this one, what I, uh, I, I kind of have a, a way that I like to do it all the time. And what I do, see, like, do you want to look straight down on these or do you want to look at the side? Because this... Okay, well, so let's say... Is that the question you have to ask? It, well, exactly. So what I'd be thinking about is that you've got, you've got your shadows, they're going in the same angle, but this looks like you're looking down on top of it, and that's because of how you placed it, like that. Do you see how you went right completely underneath it like that and brought it way out like that, like this? Yeah, I, okay. I, I see that. I don't particularly like it, but I didn't... Okay, I, I did not give much thought as to where I was placing it. That's okay. We weren't creating a, a, a painting. We were just practicing. So, you know. I like the brown one. It's excellent. Excellent. I like the brown one. Okay, so here, you see, this turned out very, very well. And this is something that I like to do, too. Do you see how the difference is in the shadow? Do you see how much more effective that was? And the same thing over here. Can Can you see that, Sue? Oh, yes. I'm sorry. I'm nodding my head. <laughs> I can't see you nodding your head. <laughs> okay. Yes, I see it. Yes. Okay. And then if I was looking at this one over here, or even if I was looking at, at these, all of these, these three here, I'd be thinking my highlights up here, highlight, highlight here, and I would be putting my shadow down a little bit more. Okay. This would, because the angle and how it's popped up like that would look like it is tipped up more. I'm going to go ahead. Try, I wonder if I can do this. All right. So if we have, oh, look at that. I got that fancy tool. Okay. So we have it like that. You have a rock 
And then if we had our shadow, so if we had our shadow, okay, I'm thinking if I wanted this to stand up like that, my highlights up here, I would be thinking about, remember I said I like to accentuate things a little bit? I would bring it down a little bit more. You really kind of have to just see what's happening. And I usually, it sounds crazy, but I let, I work with the pressure on the brush, but I'd be careful not to go absolutely underneath it like that. This was excellent because you tapered it. You could have tapered this out a little bit more. I would have stopped maybe right there. Let's see if I can get out of this. Yeah, I think that's what I'm, I'm, I'm going too high on the, on the back side of the rock. I yes. can see that right away. Okay. So that's one thing. Uh, exactly. Is, yeah, I'm probably tending to paint them on instead of using the belly of the brush. It is interesting, isn't it? I mean, because if when you try to paint it on, then it looks a little too deliberate. We want to let that sweeping stroke happen. And this, the next one. this is gorgeous. This, I love this. I, I would have liked, and let's, you know, this could have even been a marble. This could be glass. You know, it's just a different shape, different color. And if it was glass, what you would want to do is bring a little bit of this color into the shadow. So that way, because the light would come right through and I would lift a little bit of that out and you'll get to that, but you're doing a great job. Okay. okay. And Sue, if you see any comment that I'm not addressing, please let me know. Okay. So this is looking great. Beautiful. Um, it's interesting. You can see that spatter up there. Great job with the spatter. And... I'd also like you to tell me in the chat if you are, what are you finding that you like uh, with, what tool do you like to use for the spatter? Do you like to use the um, toothbrush? Are you using an atomizer? Is there something else that you prefer? And what's working for you? Okay, this is beautiful, beautiful texture in here. And we see how it, it doesn't have a very, very dark, dark contrast, but it's dark enough to work together and, and really make that highlight stand out. So these are all excellent, excellent. The other thing I wanted to say, when you do your shadows, don't you have to really um, maybe reflect on where your light source is coming from to see where the shadows are going to be going? Well, we know that uh, I don't really think about things too much. And uh, uh, okay. you know, uh, so, I mean, a lot of times I'm thinking I should. But so we know that the shadow of uh, the sun is going to be on one side and then that's going to be your lightest side and whatever the opposite side is going to be your shadow. Right. OK. And then when you do your shadow, the uh, part of the rock on that part of the shadow side, the rock is going to be a little bit darker than the other side. Right. Yeah. So a lot of those paintings, in fact, we're going to go into some of those paintings in just a second and you're going to see. So, okay. Okay. All right. So All right, let's, thanks. okay, sure. Thanks a lot. I appreciate that. Okay. All right. Let's go on. Good. Beautiful job with your sand. Excellent job. Beautiful. I want to walk on that beach and I bet anything you'll probably have people say, they want to pick it up off the paper. And just like what I mentioned before, what I would do, let's see, so you have your shadow going like this. I might stagger it a little differently, not much, but how you could really separate it is do that same thing. Uh, let's see, make sure I've got the right thing. And just go, like if you had a little bit darker there and maybe a little bit darker there, that way we separate it. And I do like the value. Now, this is something I'd like everybody to notice, too. Do you see how the value is transparent enough that you can still see the underlying sand? And that's what gives it that depth. So that was very well done. Birkett? Yep. Um, this, is my, this is Annie. This is mine. That, I'm still having a problem when you're talking about staggering that one shadow on the rock. Can you kind of draw that? out with your arrow there to show me just exactly how you would stagger that. Okay, let's find, I'm just gonna go ahead and make a rock. The bad thing is there's no highlight in there. So let's go ahead and lift a little color out. And why I wouldn't normally do a rock like this is because if I start to lift color out, it can look a little labored, but 
Let's see, I'm sure we can make that work and get a little water in there. And let's put another rock in somewhere. It's because I need something to work with. And so again, to your uh, highlight, remember the sun's gonna be on one side. Let's go ahead, we're gonna keep all the sun coming from this angle this way. And how about if we have another rock back here? I mean, so I think, think it was a good question because it really makes me think of how can I explain that better? And this, this happens with the kelp too because we need that staggered look. All right, so let's see. I'm gonna to have to dry that for a second so I'll be able to work with it. Okay, so what I'm thinking here, do I wanna use my number 14 or my number 20? And let's see, we've got, I'm gonna think, which one do I want in front of the other? So I think of my highlight here, and this could actually be budding up right next to that rock, that's okay. I've got a little highlight there, I, that little dry spot of the paper, so I'll work with that. That rock's gonna be behind there. And I, I hope I can answer your question with this. Um, I think we wanted to have, a, a, let's see. Okay, so what I'm doing here is I'm getting a French ultramarine blue burnt sienna mix, but I did have a tiny bit of Windsor blue in there. So I'm just gonna mix it into a neutral color. And I'm thinking, how do I want to do this? I don't want it to be brown because if it's brown, then it's, it's really warm and then it doesn't, um, warm colors come forward and so I want it to recede more. So I'm thinking, let's go ahead, how do I want to make this happen? I have a tendency of just, remember like I did the first time, I pull it out a little further. So I'm gonna go like that. And I'd like this rock to pull forward and I would taper it. I actually grabbed the number 20, which I didn't plan on. And, okay, so we have that little rock there. I, if I had a little ragged edge down there, that could be the sand, I'm trying to taper that. And then as, uh, it's not going to be the same rock that you had, and that's what I was trying to get to. So let's see. So that way this one pulls forward, that goes back. What I would do, I could leave it uh, hard like that, or I don't wanna have all those lines. What I might do is just soften an edge right through here. Maybe go around it like that because I'm thinking of contrast. That's, I want that to be in the shadow side, so I need to make it a little bit darker through here. This should be darker too. I'm gonna just soften that edge because that's not really a hard shadow. That's just to give it some shape. Then we've got this one and I'd like the shadow to be back here and I want it to be, that's not the right angle of what you uh, had in mind, but let's see. I'm gonna go ahead and I don't want that's that. A, Does that work? Okay. Yeah, I mean, it's okay if it's not going the same way. My basic question was like, when you bring the shadow that's being cast from the rock in front and it's falling on the rock behind, and it's like, you know how you kind of got to bring it in a little bit and then it fans out a little bit on that rock behind. So I guess my, I, I'm maybe not asking it right, is how, how do you shape that? where it tapers a little bit and then goes on the rock and then tapers back again. Right, well that's, that's what I was trying to get here, but I didn't, uh, I didn't make this, the same shape. So, okay, so, I'm just, so what I'm doing here is just trying to soften a few of these edges first. And, oh, okay, so basically what I'm doing is I'm looking at the shape and I'm playing with the pressure on the brush. That's, there is no real formula to that in my mind. It is 
I, I think about, okay, I'm going to start here. I always start like a little bit at the top there, and then I'll go and I press. So it's just like a habit that I do. Okay, so that stands out, and I know that that would need more shape. That red, uh, edge is too ragged. And I would need to separate these because right now, as is, where there's no separation between them. So I'm thinking about, um, okay, so you, that still doesn't answer your question. Let me go back to your painting. Maybe I can get it from that and see exactly that rock. All right, so you've got this. Okay. Well, thanks for stumping me today. <laughs> okay, I'm going to go ahead and just make a rock there, and I'll make up, because I don't want to waste some paper. And let's see, I think we got it there. I'm going to stop the share, so that way, um, and I'm going to look at your painting, and I think to help it not be so distracting for you, I'm going to lift a little bit of this color out. And I'll leave those edges dry so we don't have the problem. I just don't want you to get caught up in all this um, red. And let me know if you can't see it. I'm looking at your painting instead of, of all of you right now. Okay, I'm gonna... I can see it very good. Okay, great. So I'm just going to go ahead and try to get some of those shapes back. Okay. So is that a good enough shape for you to see? Do you get the idea on that? Yeah. Yeah, I can see it. Okay, great. Okay, let's get let's try to make it dry. All right, and then I'm going to dry this for a second. So hopefully this should work for you. I mean, if you can imagine that a rock with color in it, it's very similar to what you have there, but we're just looking at shadows on a scrap piece of paper. So what I'd be thinking about, hopefully this will work, and then I'm going to get back to the other paintings. All right, so I'm going to use my basic um, pressure on the brush, and look at how much water I have in my palette here. Okay, that's the consistency that I'm usually looking for for my shadows. Just like that. All right. And then I'm thinking I'm going to keep my light, uh, thinnest point up here. I'm going to expand as I go down here. And let's see, let's get back to this so I can see what you're looking at. And then I would go ahead and I'm going to have to have a shadow on this side. But see, I wouldn't make it as, it really depends. I don't think that there's a formula, and it, especially if we're just making it up. This one would need more, oh, obviously there's no color in here. So I would probably need to soften that first so I get a little more of a shadow in there. And then once I have that, I need to separate it. I'm going to go ahead and try to go a little darker in the background so hopefully you'll be able to see this. I'm going to turn it so you can see. Does that, um, do you get the idea on that? Yeah, I can. Thank you very much. Okay, good. So uh, that does help, I hope, yeah? Yes, okay. thank you so much. Okay, you're welcome. And just think, this would be much more effective, too, once you have your highlights on there. So returning to this one, let's put that to the side for a second. Now, I'm going to dry that just for a second so we can get those shadows in and pop those rocks off. So let's say we've got this. I'm going to go ahead and pull these rocks apart. like this 
And I brought the water out, but I need to take it to the edge of that shadow right through here. And now I'm going to go ahead and bring it a little bit there. And I'm going to dissolve a tiny bit of that. And here, to bring this out, I might go a little bit further through here. Let's see what we've got here. And maybe accentuate this a little further because this is pretty much, that would answer your question too in a sense because we're trying to get a shadow on that rock. Something like that. And then I would go a little darker down here. Okay, so they start to step away from each other. And then I would wet this too. So that's another way of doing it. And obviously, I mean, you could also make Easter eggs out of them. So let's, let's go ahead and... Um... Thanks, Margaret. Oh, you're welcome. Thank you so much. Now, if you're interested in this particular course, Rock, Sand, and Sea Glass, I have a direct link to the non-interactive version on my show notes. And if you'd like to be part of the conversation and join the live meetings, you can always upgrade to the interactive version. Now, if you're interested in hearing more of these podcasts, make sure to subscribe to the channel or go to my website, birgitoconnor.com, and join my email list. So until next time, have fun and happy painting.